Hello everybody, my name's Chris Bartley and I'm a Senior Health and Safety Advisor working in association with HAE Business Guard and today we'll be carrying out a webinar uh, and the first section of the webinar will be all about working from home and managing uh, employees remotely through a crisis. Uh, we will then be looking at uh, what we need to be doing as, as businesses when returning to work and also what we need to have in place uh, for employees returning to work as well, what we, some things that we might need to look at. So in this first section of the webinar, um, it will be aimed at employees, employers, managers, who are managing personnel or working from home themselves. And what we wanna be covering is the challenges that you might face when working from home, what employers and line managers can do to ensure a smooth transition into home working. What we've put in place to assist our home workers as a, as a company and as a business and as an organisation. And tips for those people who may be carrying out meetings remotely and also working from home themselves. Okay, so why is there now a need to look into how we manage remote workers appropriately and how we work from home? Well, a couple of months ago, um, due to COVID-19, many businesses and people had to change the way they work. Uh, we had a lack of preparation. I remember, you know, um, March the 20th, they shut the pubs. And then a couple of days later, the lockdown restrictions started increasing, especially in regards to what work could be carried out. And we had a lack of preparation. OK, so we were unprepared for working from home because we were advised to work from home where we could. Now, in health and safety, we, we are expected to identify and plan for the reasonably foreseeable events and risks. But because this was an unforeseen event, it happened and, and restrictions started to be uh, put on us from the government, uh, we weren't able to plan for the event. So normally what happens is uh, if we put plans in place and systems in place, we can reduce hazardous events happening. But with this situation, we've been reactive to the situation, so we can't be proactive. So we're still reacting to uh, government guidance all the time and having to change the way we work. You know, as restrictions start to get lifted, um, we start to return to work. As, as restrictions were increased, we had to try and look at other ways of working which would uh, avoid us having to go into the workplace and allow us to maintain social distancing measures. So many of us had to start working from home and we face many challenges and still do face many challenges and some of the challenges that we will have faced over the past couple of months and, and still face now is a change in what is expected. Many businesses when we were told to work from home where we can uh, had never worked from home before. Many people had never worked from home before as well. For instance, myself, I was already based at home. So I go out every day and carry out my health and safety audits and inspections. But also when I come home at the end of the day, I have an office at home and I have one day a week to catch up on paperwork. So I was set up for working from home. But many of our um, my, my colleagues and employees would never work from home before. It always worked in the office or the depots, and which would be the same for many of, uh, of the HAE uh, members as well. And then we're asked to, to do a lot of work remotely or, or from home. So we were changing what was expected. Um, the way that we communicate had to change. So we faced many challenges and still face many challenges in regards to communication. OK, so there are different platforms out there so that, that allow you to overcome this challenge. So at the moment, my organisation is using Microsoft Teams, but we've had to adapt and use other uh, platforms of communication such as Zoom uh, and, and, and similar sort of platforms that offer the same sort of service. This has allowed us to carry out meetings remotely uh, to keep in touch with our teams and our employees. And even as, as, as employees working from home, keep in touch with our colleagues and, and keep that workplace atmosphere going as best we can. The workspace that, um, that people were expected to work from home on were, may not be suitable and weren't, was not suitable at the time. So that was a challenge, you know, uh, at, the, at the time it was a challenge to sort of uh, get 
gain um, office equipment that, that would normally be provided in the office and, you know, such as uh, office chairs and desks. So we had to look at more practical ways of allowing our home workers to comply with any health and safety legislation, such as the, the display screen equipment regulations. Uh, as an organisation, we allowed uh, our employees to take some of their office equipment home. Uh, as some of the home working has got more permanent, um, we've had to source uh, more equipment, such as office chairs that would be permanent for, for the home workers, because that sort of home working had become more permanent over the last few months. There may have been a lack of information or a lack of facilities at people's homes. You know, poor broadband speed, even, uh, you know, people who had fiber optic and, uh, and, and fast broadband speed were struggling because there was that many people using uh, the broadband at, at one time and, and, and communication systems like Microsoft Teams, that everything started to slow down. Some people didn't have very good broadband quality in their areas anyway, and may have a lack of broadband or not even broadband at all at the time and not have access to internal systems. So there are some of the challenges that you might face. Relationships were a challenge. Many people found themselves and still do find themselves working from home where their parents are, their siblings are, their partners are, their children are, and they're all trying to work in the same place together. Uh, and that can be quite challenging. I just mentioned children, many home workers may have dependents such as uh, children who were not going to school anymore and still haven't all fully returned to school that you had to sort of um, manage your work day around. I personally have a dog that I have to take out on a regular basis. I have an 87 year old grandmother who has been shielding for the last few months who needed her shopping doing and, and other support. So, you know, I've had to work my working day around that as well. So it's, it's, it's important as managers and companies that you are flexible with the home working. So what about managers and employers who are managing a, a, a team of remote workers? I also have a team that work with me um, and I have to make sure that I set out uh, my expectations and what's expected of, of, of them uh, so they know exactly what they're doing. And I have to have a, some form of trust um, you know, to allow them to, to work on their own remotely and get on with what I've, I've asked them to do. I've also got to be flexible with what's expected because not everybody is, again, as I say, used to working from home. And to track performance as well, tracking performance remotely of, of what your workers are doing and what they've done and what they've achieved and what progress they've made isn't always easy. And I find that having a meeting on a Monday morning via Zoom or Teams, Microsoft Teams, or, or even just on the phone, will allow you to set out your expectations and what's expected that week, but then also have your employees fill out um, uh, worksheets and, and those worksheets will allow you to track progress throughout the week. Now, talking specifically to, to managers and employers who are now uh, managing more home workers than usual, you're going to need to have a number of um, characteristics to allow you to do this effectively. And some of those characteristics are as follows. You need to be an excellent communicator and communicate what your expectations are and your instructions via different platforms now, such as video call or phone or even email. But you also need to listen to your employees' needs and wants and, and understand what those needs and wants are so that you can support your team and your, your, your remote workers, okay? By providing that support, uh, will allow them to work from home uh, more effectively. You need to be consistent, okay? So set out what your expectations are, but be understanding of, uh, of the challenges that your employees may face while working from home. And you also need to lead by example. Show your team and show your employees how working from home can be achieved. And I'm sure that many of us have, have realized as, as, as employers or employees and businesses that you know, many things can be achieved rem working remotely and carrying out meetings and, and, and other tasks remotely. Because we've been thrown into that situation where we've had no other choice. Okay, so what can we do as, uh, as employers? Then there are certain things that we can do to ease the burden of employees and make things run smoother for managers. 
firstly, we must not forget that our duty of care does not stop when employees start working from home. Okay, we still have a duty of care under the Health and Safety at Work Act to ensure the health, safety and welfare of our employees as far as reasonably practicable. We have a duty under the Management of Health, Safety at Work Regulation 1999 to carry out risk assessments on our activities and um, it's advisable that as companies you carry out home working risk assessments where you've got home workers or still have home workers okay that will allow you to establish any needs and support that your home workers would require if you carry out a home worker risk assessment what you'll find is some common hazards associated with working from home and working remotely and some of those hazards might be display screen equipment use and ergonomics lone working health and mental well-being and even fire and if we break that down and have a look at some of the ha those hazards specifically regards to display screen equipment uh, and ergonomics uh, i've already mentioned that you carry out a home worker risk assessment now a good idea is to issue your home workers your remote workers with self-assessment check sheets where they can fill out what they need what they've got in place already and send that back to you so you can review that and make sure that you provide them with the right equipment and the right training and information when working from home and working remotely and any other support that they need you need to make sure that they're provided with suitable equipment now like i said at the beginning when we first all were asked to work from home um it was very difficult to source all the display screen equipment okay um now as it's become more permanent and if some of your employees are going to be working from home for the foreseeable that equipment has been more easily to uh, source so things like desks um, dual screens computer mouse and, and, and other things that will help with display screen equipment use uh, should now be provided but at the beginning uh, there were practical measures that i i adopted and all my colleagues adopted because you know i was working in an area where um i've already got an office so i it wasn't so bad for me but uh, i found because i was working from home more that i needed to raise my screen a little bit and i didn't have anything i would i would i work off a laptop and i was waiting for an additional screen and a docking station to come so what i did was i used some books to raise that screen and i used a cushion to raise my seat now um the docking stations come now and, and now I don't need to do that and that I know that was the same for a lot of my colleagues and even the ones that work from home more often uh, before the lockdown uh, still needed to use practical measures but as as that sort of um, home working becomes more permanent you need to source more um, suitable display screen equipment for your your home workers to use you need to encourage regular breaks okay so there should be regular breaks from the workstation at least every hour but in in the current climate and and with the fact that you know there's uh, dependence and other challenges that home workers face you know we've been encouraging uh, that employees should take regular breaks for exercise taking the dog out and to to support any of the dependents that they might have, like, like myself or my, or my eight, seven year old grandmother or any children that, that they have at home as well. Uh, provide suitable information, instruction and training on how to set their workstation up. And you could get this from the HAE uh, website or even the HSE, the Health and Safety Executive provide lots of information on their website regards home working, remote working and setting up the workstation as well. Loan working, although loan working is not a significant risk associated with working from home because the activities that we're doing uh, are generally office based activities, uh, admin activities. Uh, it's not like we're working at height or, or anything that's, that's a significant risk, but it still may be a, a, a hazard associated with rem the remoteness of, of home working. So home workers can still be classed as lawn workers and should be treated as such. So ensure that regular contact is maintained with your home workers, your remote workers, and be aware of all work-related activities that they're undertaking and make sure that they're safe to do so, to, to carry out those activities 
and that their mental state is 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 in good order and if they need any support uh, regards mental health that they've got that and that leads me on to the next hazard which is probably a significant hazard uh, with uh, associated with remote working and home working especially with the uncertain times that we've been uh, coming across over the last couple of months and uh, health and mental well-being needs to be looked at try to understand your individual situations and help adjust workloads accordingly understand that not everybody's situation is is the same provide flexible working hours where possible that might better suit the individual's needs when working from home maintain contact uh, throughout the week and encourage employees to speak to different colleagues and not necessarily about work related issues and where required refer any employees that need to uh, to mental health first aiders or provide details of, of helplines or you might want to get uh, some of your first aiders or, or employees trained as mental health first aiders who can keep in contact with anyone who might need additional support fire uh, might also be a hazard when people are now working from home uh, although it's not a legal requirement to carry out a, a fire risk assessment from home uh, it's, it's not on a domestic property um, you still might want to consider a couple of things such as uh, giving suitable information instruction and training on how to set up the workplace and the workstation to avoid fire hazards okay so keeping combustible materials away from uh, ignition sources like uh, electrical equipment encourage smokers to smoke away from their workstation as they may have more combustible materials around than usual and encourage home workers to check the batteries in their smoke alarms and check that the workstation isn't impeding any escape routes. Okay, so what have we done as an organisation? Well, our employees have been working remotely for several weeks. Okay, well, it's, it's more than that now. It's been a, uh, a few months, uh, nearly four months now. Uh, we have started to, to go back out as health and safety consultants and do site visits, only if... Uh, the businesses that we're going to and the sites that we're going to are COVID secure, but we're still doing quite a lot of work from home. And for the foreseeable, until things start to pick up, we are still going to be working from home quite regularly. So we have implemented a number of measures over the last few months. Uh, we do regular video calls, as I mentioned earlier, through a variety of platforms, Skype, Zoom, Teams. Um, we have provided now our home workers with suitable office equipment and display screen equipment. Uh, we've altered the way in which we work. Um, now, I tend to have a, a manager's meeting uh, in normal circumstances at our head office every three months. Uh, we've been having more regular manager's meetings because of the situation that we've been in. But going forward, I think a lot of these manager's meetings will be done via a video conference or video call to avoid you know, having to travel the mileage for one and, and, and all be in the same room at the same time. Uh, we've been flexible, as I said earlier, we're flexible with our employees in what breaks they take, the exercise they have, and um, the looking after any dependents. Um, we've encouraged uh, family time and, and frequent breaks and provided support in regards to mental health and well-being advice and any support that's needed in that sort of um, area. And we've relaxed some working deadlines, but we've been clear on what our expectations are. And as things start to pick up and we start to go out more and the needs of our clients and members uh, start to increase, we've started to, you know, uh, the deadlines have, have, have had to sort of increase, should I say. Um, if you're going to be carrying out some meetings um, remotely, um, like I said, our managers meetings are carried out more often now, but are carried out remotely uh, and probably will be for the foreseeable you need to look at a number of things now before the meeting book slightly shorter meeting times it's more realistic in regards to getting everybody together at once set an agenda and objectives okay um, and send those out before the meeting so everybody knows what's going to be discussed and if they need to prepare anything before the meeting ensure that you are clear on which platform attendees must use whether it's skype Teams, zoom or Webex, that's another one. Um, and during the meeting, direct your questions at specific people. If you just answer an open question, people might butt in or people don't know who you're talking to. And, and if you're answering a question or speaking, 
uh, or somebody else's, should I say, uh, wait your turn and, and try not to talk over speakers and, and use the mute button when not when not talking. And I have a, a, a dog, as I said earlier, and, and it generally barks every time I'm trying to do a webinar uh, or every time I'm trying to have a meeting with a client, every time the postman dry, uh, walks past, the dog's barking. Um, so I normally try to use the mute button when I'm not talking and somebody else is. Um, don't feel like you have to fill time if the meeting's finished and you've, you've met your objectives. Wrap the meeting up with some key agreements and actions. And then after the, the meeting, share those agreed actions and, and, and next steps and feed back to the meeting organiser uh, whether anybody else needs to be on the follow-up meeting, whether any other topics need to be discussed in the next meeting as well. And book any follow-up meetings straight away when all the points are clear in everybody's mind. Okay, so the next section of the webinar, I wanted to discuss uh, the returning to work because as I say, many of you have been working from home for the last few months and there is still advice if we can work from home, work from home. But for most businesses to operate, especially regards to the higher industry, we have to be in work and many people will have to have returned to work. So there are a number of things that need to be in place to make sure that your business is COVID secure. And that's why I want to discuss on the next section of the webinar. Okay, so in this section, we'll be covering uh, the need to carry out a COVID-19 risk assessment. We'll be having a look at hierarchy of controls, um, what systems you need to be implementing to ensure that your business is COVID secure, and then what we need to do for employees returning to work as well, which sort of, um, it, it crosses over onto employment law really, but um, I'm a health and safety consultant, but we'll, we will discuss some points in regards to employees returning to work. Okay then, so firstly, um, you need to be looking at carrying out a COVID-19 risk assessment. And that risk assessment needs to be suitable and sufficient. And for a risk assessment to be suitable and sufficient, it needs to identify what work activities or situations might cause the transmission of the virus. Uh, you also need to think about who may be at risk and decide how likely it is that somebody may be exposed and act to remove the activity or situation, or if this isn't possible, control the risk. It's a legal requirement for you to carry out risk assessments in general on your normal everyday activities in regards to the workplace, but also it is now government guidance and a legal requirement to carry out a COVID-19 risk assessment, okay? You need to look at reducing the risk to an acceptable level. So in health and safety, we call it as low as reasonably practicable, okay? And the best way to do that is following a hierarchy of controls. As you can see on the screen, there is basically um, a hierarchy of con controls diagram. And you can see, the, the first thing you need to look at when we're controlling uh, the risk is can we eliminate the risk of people being exposed and, and that's been done in the past in the last few months by social, is social isolation. Uh, if we can't and we, and we can't always eliminate the risk of COVID-19 completely, we need to look at substitution to reduce the risk and you know, substitute in the way that we work to homework in which we discussed in the first section of the webinar will reduce the risk of transmission. As I've mentioned, as we've moved on to this second section of the webinar, many of us are gonna to have to go back to work for the business to operate, to continue to operate. So then you just need to look at engineering controls like better ventilation, physical barriers, social distancing, you know, enhanced cleaning procedures. And then there's also administrative uh, controls, which would, uh, sorry, I couldn't say that then, uh, which would uh, include like staged returns, uh, scheduling different break times so not everybody's going on breaks at once, uh, people starting at different times, okay? And your last level of protection, which is not a substitute for the more robust levels on the hierarchy of control, is personal protective equipment, such as face coverings and disposable gloves, which are only a substitute for these more robust control measures. So if we have a look at uh, control measures in more detail in regards to 
at what we need to be doing as organizations, employers and companies to reduce the transmission of the disease. We could follow the government's five steps of working safely. Now we've already covered the fact that you need to carry out a risk assessment, okay? So before starting work, you should ensure the safety of your workplace by carrying out a risk assessment in line with HSE guidance, health and safety executive guidance. Consult your workers and any trade unions and even uh, business guards like the HAE and, and share the results of your risk assessment with your work, workforce on your website or via emails or briefings and toolbox talks. And the next stage and one of the more robust control measures that reduces the risk of transmission is to develop cleaning, hand washing and hygiene procedures. Yeah, You should increase the frequency of hand washing and surface cleaning by encouraging people to follow the government guidance on hand washing and hygiene, provide hand sanitizer around the workplace in addition to your washrooms that you'll have there already, which is fully stocked with, with hand washing facilities. Uh, you need to look at frequently cleaning and disinfecting objects and surfaces that are touched more regularly. Um, enhance cleaning of busy areas such as canteens and workstations. Setting clear use of cleaning guidance for toilets and provide hand drying facilities either by paper towels or electrical dryers. You still need to look at helping people work from home where they can. You should take all reasonable steps to help people work from home by discussing home working arrangements with your employees, ensuring that they have the right equipment, for example, remote access to work systems, include them in any necessary communications that they may not get because they're not actually in the workplace, and look after, as I mentioned earlier, their physical and mental well-being. You need to maintain social distancing where possible, okay? So where possible, maintain the government guidance on social distancing, put up signs to remind workers and visitors of social distancing guidance, avoid people sharing workstations, use floor tape to mark out social distancing measures, um, arrange one-way systems. I've seen this on quite a lot of businesses that I've been to, they've arranged one-way systems to allow uh, the smooth flow of traffic through the workplace and reduce the number of pe pe persons, sorry, that each, sorry, number of people that each person comes into contact with by using fixed teams and partnerships, stagger arrival times and departure times, stagger break times as well. Okay, so where we can't maintain uh, social distancing measures. There are going to be some activities where we can't maintain social distancing. Uh, it might be unloading uh, equipment from, from vehicles or loading equipment from vehicles. We need to look at whether that activity needs to carry on for uh, the business to operate. Okay, And if it does, we need to keep that activity to as short a time as possible. And we need to keep the people carrying out that activity in the same teams or partnerships. And then we need to follow increased hand washing, hand sanitizer, and in some circumstances, potentially wear face coverings as well and disposable gloves. So you might come up against some industry challenges associated with the hire association. Okay. Um, some questions that I've had come through is, is what about traveling to and from work? Okay. Well, it won't always be possible to maintain social distancing inside a vehicle. Many in-vehicle tasks need more than one person, for example, heavy, heavy deliveries or collections, and uh, it's, it's difficult to change the configuration of vehicles, okay? So what you really want to do is firstly be looking at avoiding multiple occupancy of vehicles where it's safe to do so, okay? Vehicles should not be shared if possible. If it is not possible uh, and you need to share vehicles, consider additional safety measures. So the vehicles must be cleaned before use, okay? Um, you need to look at cleaning it after use as well. If people have to travel together, um, keep them to a minimum and keep them in partnerships and teams again. Um, what about um, customer collections and returns? Well, you could look at arranging uh, all orders um, by telephone where possible, 
arranged for specific collection return times to reduce the number of people on site at any one time. Ensure customers are informed of social distancing rules and that they will apply when collecting and returning goods. Use physical barriers where necessary between customers and employees. Use floor markings to show one-way directions and, and social distancing measures. Uh, on return of equipment, all equipment handles must be sanitised. Um, card payments uh, would be uh, better than, 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 than taking money. Um, and so that would be the use of contactless payments would all reduce the transmission of the virus. Um, what about the preparation uh, of equipment for hire then? Um, well, when equipment comes in, um, it would need to be sanitised and cleaned, especially the controls and the, and the hands. And those that are doing the cleaning may need to be provided with face coverings and disposable gloves. And then make sure that it's clean before it goes back out of on for hire. And what about personal protective equipment? Well, I've had many calls coming through regarding personal protective equipment over the last couple of months. Now, the wearing of the PPE uh, to protect against COVID-19 transmission, like I said earlier, is no substitute for more robust control measures such as social distancing, increased uh, washing and and enhance cleaning procedures and, and personal hygiene. These measures are best known to break the transmission of the virus, okay? You could wear face coverings that would offer limited benefit. You could wear disposable gloves um, in certain circumstances where you might have to uh, work within social distancing measures. Okay, so finally, what I wanted to quickly, briefly talk about is the return to work for employees. Now, many organisations will have employees returning to work from furlough or a period of closure. So some points that you want to consider is planning of the workforce ahead of returning to work, okay? So the need to review employee availability, including those who are shielding, have caring responsibilities, or those who commute to work who may be affected by transport issues, okay? So uh, issuing your employees with availability questionnaires for them to fill in so you can plan the work for the workforce and the work ahead. Um, you need to look at whether there's enough work for employees with re returning to work. So the furlough scheme has been extended for a further few months. So also they are planning on introducing or uh, they are introducing a, a part time furlough scheme, which will allow employees sorry, employers, sorry, to bring their employees back on a part-time basis when uh, being furloughed for the rest of the time. So we, we as, as, a, as a consultancy, have just brought or are bringing uh, two of our uh, consultants back uh, on a part-time basis. So they'll be working Monday to Thursday and then they'll be furloughed for the rest of the time. And that's going to uh, um, ease the... Um, the pressure that's being put on our business in regards to the amount of work that's now coming in as everybody starts to go back to work. But then in the, air, in the, in the areas where, you know, there may not be a full week's work for them, it's allowed us to keep them on furlough on that part-time basis. Okay. Employees refusing to work uh, if you've made your uh, business COVID secure. Okay. So, um, you would have to consider those who are shielding and caring. Now that is, sort of changing from the 1st of August where people who are shielding the, the restrictions are going to be uh, released, uh, sorry, lifted on them or paused, should I say. However, if uh, other employees are not in this category and are refusing to come to work, I would speak with them, advise the precautions you've put in place to ensure that it is COVID secure and the workplace is safe and therefore their employees are expected to return to work if you need them. Um, do you need to undertake a return to work uh, sort of assessment or a return to work for the employees coming back? Well, yes, you will. I mean, many of them will have been out of the work for maybe four months uh, doing activities that uh, involve non-COVID-19 risks. So they work towards risk assessments and safe systems of work, but they've not worked towards them for, for four months. You'd want to sort of re-communicate them to 
the employees coming back to work, but you'd also want to be looking at re-communicate or sorry, communicating your COVID-19 risk assessments and procedures so they know exactly what's in place and what needs to be done. So I hope this has, uh, has been helpful. I hope uh, it's answered a lot of your questions. Um, if you have any questions, can you go to the HE Business Guard website and, uh, and their email uh, address will be on there where you can email them with any questions on home working and returning to work. Uh, and, you know, I'll be happy to, to answer any of those. Thank you very much.